call all of the January 6, 2011 meeting of the Central Parish Council. Uh, there one stand for the invocation by Councilman George Valentine and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance by Major Don Billy. The Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight, Father, humble Lord before you, Lord, as uh, we thank you for your gracious and your grace, Lord, and the fact that you sent your Son, Lord. Father, we, as we look into this new year, Lord, we ask that uh, blessings on all of our families, on the council, and especially the administration, and our, of course our workers, Father, in the parish as we uh, start a new year, Father, hoping that each person uh, examines his heart and makes sure that, uh, Lord, that uh, their life uh, shines for you. Father, we ask uh, blessings on this meeting tonight. We ask wisdom. We ask that you, as always, Father, bless our troops that are abroad and here at home. And we ask all of these things in your Son's holy name. Amen. 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 Roll call, Madam Secretary, uh, all present except uh, Councilman Bell. We're moving to public comment, period. Anyone wishing to speak on uh, any item on the agenda, please sign in with the Secretary and be given time to speak. We have uh, one speaker on item number four, Ms. Goppin. Good evening, Councilmen, citizens of Ascension Parish. We just stood together and pledged allegiance to the flag and the republic for which it stands with liberty and justice for all. Are these empty words? Do they mean nothing? Patrick Henry, one of the founding fathers, expressed the true spirit of every American best. Is life so dear or peace so sweet? as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, God Almighty. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. These are the words spoken before the American Revolution. Opportunity for the public to comment in these public meetings is a freedom protected by our Constitution at the state and federal levels. It is the duty of every citizen to exercise these freedoms. Veterans have fought and died to protect and preserve our liberties. The fact that a veteran was removed from the chambers at your last meeting by Chairman Bell is unnecessary and distressing. It is a reflection of the attitude of the chairman, but also reflects poorly on the council as a whole. The First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Those who attend these meetings can clearly see the public is not out of control. Those who watch at home should be aware that what they see and hear is controlled by this administration. The fact that you do not like what a speaker says does not give you or anyone the authority to silence that speaker or remove them from the room. Your rules should not be used to muzzle citizens or intimidate the people. Remember, your powers come from the people. This is the people's government. This is still America, and it will continue to be the land of the free and the home of the brave, as long as the freedoms we have, cher we have are cherished and preserved by us all. Thank you. We're moving our presentations. We have a presentation from Mr. Troy Landry. Uh, he couldn't make it here tonight. He apologizes. He'll, he'll be back at a later time. We have a certificate of recognition for Major Don Bailey, Junior ROTC Air Force. Mr. President. <coughs> Thank you. 
seems like we see this gentleman on a regular basis. Uh, he's always being honored for something that he does for his community and his country. And, uh, you know, he's a great citizen of Ascension Parish and uh, certainly one of the, uh, the great educators that uh, we've had here. And, uh, you know, we, he's going to continue getting these accolades because of the job that he does. And uh, he's just a good gentleman and a good friend and uh, a great educator. But anyway. Certificate of Recognition. This certificate is hereby awarded to U.S. Army Air Force. Trying to get you on. retired Donald R. Bailey. The Parish of Ascension is proud to present this certificate of recognition, recognition to Major Don Bailey for recently being honored at the 2010 Air Force ROTC Outstanding Instructor. Major Bailey was selected for this award over more than 2,000 instructors. This past year, he also won the coveted Louisiana High School Teacher of the Year Award. Major Bailey of Donaldsonville High School Air Force Junior ROTC, Detachment LA 223, was chosen from 21 regional finalists as the outstanding educator. We join Council Chairman Pat Bell, the entire parish council, expressing our deepest gratitude for all you do and have, have done to make a positive impact on the youth of the Central Parish. Mr. Bailey, thank you so much. Real short and sweet. Uh, first of all, thank you. It seems like every time I recognize for some something in the parish, uh, you guys never forget and, and recognize me as well. Uh, but the one thing I want to say about this is this is a brand new award. Uh, they always recognize outstanding instructors, and they always have. Uh, but normally there's about 300 of them, and uh, that was the end of it. This year, though, they started something new, and after the selection for the 300 out of uh, 2000, this is worldwide, because we have Air Force Gerald TC units around the world in DOD schools. So they decided this year to take those 300 and meet another board, and that out of that they would select one officer and one NCO to be the best of the best. And, and naturally, that's me, but I, uh, I mean, they selected me, but what it says more than that is that, it, that I'm proud that it is me because I'm here. I'm in Donaldsonville. I'm at the Donaldsonville High School, so I represent my kids, my cadets, and the school, Donaldsonville and Ascension Parish. That's really what I'm happy for. So that wall that goes up for the first time, you know, I'm the, the, the first annual, and there's, it's going to go up on a wall at headquarters at Maxwell Air Force Base in Montgomery, Alabama. And I'm not concerned about it being me. Is if you've read the article already, you know I said my I love me wall is full. Okay, I don't need any more awards, but what it does do, it reflects on all of us. It reflects on the school and our parish, and that's really what I want, is to get all the accolades that we need, because we do deserve them. We have a great uh, uh, bunch of cadets and students at Donaldsonville High School, and they do not get enough recognition. So I do this for them. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move right into item number six, Parish President Report, appointment to the Planning and Zoning Review Board. Yes, Ms. Pat Piku uh, passed away. She was on, this is actually uh, uh, a spot that she had, and this is the appeal board. And I'd like to uh, nominate Mr. Brian Aguilar, he lives in Ascension Parish, he's an engineer. We have on uh, Maplewood Drive in Prairieville. So moved, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion by second. second. Mr. Dempsey Lambert, second by Mr. Dennis Cullen. Any discussion? Any opposition? This is confirmed. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to recommend uh, the Senate, Cinnamon Gauthier. Uh, Gauthier. Uh, however you want to say it. Gauthier. <laughs> motion. 
Second uh, a motion by Mr. Adrian Thompson, <laughs> second by Mr. Todd Lambert, to uh, for the appointment of Simon. The council uh, secretary. And the council finished. secretary. And uh, I also like to recognize Ms. Susan Patterson, who's still here, and I think her last day is the 14th of January. And I want to again thank her for her years of service and a job well done, and uh, hopefully she enjoys her retirement. Any discussion on sentiment? Any opposition? Confirmed. The other thing, I don't know if you were going to do this, but uh, I'd like to ask you to take a moment of silence for Mr. Charles Pasqua, uh, who uh, recently passed away and was a long-time leader in Ascension Parish, Mayor of, Ascent, Mayor of Gonzales, and also uh, head of the municipal association. On behalf of the council, we ask everybody to bow their heads for a short moment. Thank you. Mr. Pasco was a good man, good man in the community for a lot of years. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to uh, agenda item number seven, consent agenda. So move, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion by Mr. Todd Lambert, second by Mr. Chris Lord. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion passed. Committee uh, report for moving to agenda item number eight, transportation committee recommendation. Mr. Chairman Dempsey Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a is a resolution for the parish of Ascension to accept responsibility of costs associated with LA Highway 42 sewer improvement project. Motion. A motion by Councilman Chris Lord. Second. Second by Councilman Dennis Culler. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries. B is the corrections to the contract renewals for 2011 to read as follows. Uh, Bookhorn Park Incorporated Engineer Design Services, 150000 We'll move on these individuals. So moved. We have a motion by Councilman Kent Shakespeare. Second by Councilman Todd Lambert. And discussion. Motion passes. Next is SJB Group Surveying and Associated Services, 100000 we have a motion by Councilman Todd Lambert. Second. Second by Councilman Dennis Cullen. Any discussion? Motion passes. End of my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Next thing, we'll move into Strategic Planning Committee recommendations. Uh, Vice Chairman George Valentine was uh, at the last meeting. Chairman Kent Shakes Snyder was out uh, in the hospital. Which one of you guys want to take? Right. Kent? Okay. Kent first, uh, first, let me, uh, I was remiss uh, absolutely in, in uh, recognizing the fact that uh, Kent's back with us, and we're glad that he was here. Don't do the mistake like I did and almost hit him on the back, welcome him back. <laughs> but uh, he's a little stiff neck, but we're glad he came through his surgery and Lord took care of him, so we appreciate that. Strategic planning meeting, we uh, had several items. Uh, one of them was a resolution uh, to authorize and approve the issuance of a, a sales and delivery of a note to it not to exceed $1,500,000 revenue bonds in one or more series for the Property Protection Board number one, district number one, and the Parish of Ascension. Now, that is uh, for the uh, uh, district one to buy uh, five uh, fire uh, engines, new ones. Mm -hmm. um, it was an uh, extensive discussion about it, a uh, very good explanation. Uh, I, I'm apologize. There were some very good uh, packets that they gave explaining uh, everything uh, about the situation. And uh, some of you may have it, uh, but uh, it was uh, very, uh, very good put together by five four. And So moved, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion by Councilman Benny Johnson, second by Councilman Todd Lambert. Do we have someone that wants to speak on that? Or do we need it? Yeah, Anybody needs an explanation? We got somebody out there. If you don't. I think Gene's here to give an explanation. Gene. Okay, Mr. Ryan. Mr. Jim Ryan, bond consultant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As Vice Chairman Valentine 
said this is a, a resolution to allow parties to want to exceed the issue of the one and a half million dollars worth of uh, revenue bonds uh, for the acquisition of five fire trucks. Uh, we've met with the party a couple of times, um, went over everything. Um, as always, the parameters are probably a little bit bigger than we we'll probably need. Uh, they probably actually need around a million, two million, three. Uh, interest rate will probably be less than 5%, but they, we're going to try to keep their note around $200,000 to $250,000 a year. So we may go longer or shorter on the end, depending on how the interest rate comes in. And also, I think they're willing to spend somewhere between zero and $300,000 of cash on hand to kind of, again, keep, to buy down the principal amount to keep the note where they can afford it. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. I believe also uh, that they have said in the meeting that they have the budget for that. Yes, sir. And to handle the note that uh, they pretty much have it all, all figured out. Try to get us some good service in the parish. Yes, Friends. Okay. Yes, Ms. Shakes. Uh, before we vote, I, I want to uh, commend everyone from uh, 5 District 1. It, 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 they got out and really worked hard to try to uh, there's, a, there's a tremendous amount of needs, and it's a very unique situation that all the fire stations and everything, and where the limited amount of money goes. And so, uh, you know, we've really seen a lot of people working very hard to do their due diligence and, and come forward with uh, what I think is a good plan to help uh, help these fire stations move forward and everything. And uh, uh, a lot of thought was put forward, a lot of work was done, so we appreciate everyone involved. So, thank you, sir. Anyone else? Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any more discussion? Motion pass. <clears throat> okay. Uh, item number B is the purchase of Pelican Point maintenance building for a fire department substation. You also have a very informative packet uh, uh, in, in your folder on, in front of you, uh, Councilman, that uh, describes exactly uh, uh, what this situation is and the fact that uh, uh, the price and the, uh, the, uh, the seller is also doing some renovations for the fire department and uh, we discussed that at, uh, at length. I got two, I got, uh, two speakers on this. Uh, first one, Mr. Beverly Byron. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. I'm here to ask you to please support this and approve this project, the purchase of the Pelican Point Maintenance Building for a proposed substa uh, substation. The station would not only benefit Pelican Point residents and businesses, but it would also benefit the people or the residents of Ascension Trace, River Ridge, Pelican Crossing, and the individual homes that are built on Highway 22 and Highway 44. Most residents in our area are most concerned that an emergency may arise and the railroad crossing on Highway 22 would be blocked by a train and prevent help from arising on, arriving on the scene in a uh, timely manner. If this fire station is, comes to pass, this would eliminate all everyone's fears. We hope that you would support this and approve this. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have another speaker, Ms. Mary Kelly. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm representing the Homeowners Association of the Greens at Pelican Point. Our development is for citizens 55 and older. Our properties are contiguous to the proposed uh, fire station area. I want to speak in favor of it. Our residents are looking forward to the proximity of EMS. Uh, hopefully we don't need it, but with a 55 and plus community. Uh, every second counts. Uh, we also have small lots. Our homes are very close to one another. So if a fire should erupt, um, several homes could be in danger because they're so close to one another. We also have townhomes that um, are attached. And so that same uh, concern would be for those townhomes. So we definitely support the idea of the fire station and EMS services very close to us. And we salute uh, this council for their forward thinking in moving the fire station 
to where the population shift is along uh, Highway 44 22 area. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, yes uh, it is. It's a uh, unanimous recommendation by the uh, Strategic Planning Committee to accept both these proposals. So uh, I move that we accept it. Okay. Motion by Mr. Valentine, second by Mr. Todd Lamb. Yes, Mr. President. On the purchase of the uh, maintenance building, anytime you acquire real property, it requires an ordinance. So if you want to use this as a as uh, the introduction, maybe you want to propose that it be introduced at the next meeting as an introduction as the legal to draw up the ordinance. Mm -hmm. So stated. So stated. We'll separate the fact that uh, uh, 9A that we have passed on and 9B that uh, we request a resolution. We'll follow this. Is that good enough, madam? What? It's not a resolution. It's an introduction of an ordinance. There you go. All right. Mr. Chairman, I have one. Yes, Mr. Shakespeare, of course. Oh, I'm yeah. Mr. Mr. Valentine, mm -hmm. I know it's the gated community back in the Greens. Will this, can they attach this to the Greens, or is this going to strictly come off of Highway 44? Um, actually, that question, Gene, can you answer that question for us? Yes, uh, access is going to be part of the agreement. Step up yeah. to the mic, Gene, please. Yeah, step to the mic. For the people at home. Okay. Yes, uh, we will have two accesses, uh, one through through the gate, and eventually from the station there is a right-of-way that will go right through where the uh, fence is now. So right. we will actually have two accesses there. So we do not have to go around 44. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, okay. Mr. Shakes, now. I, I, I just want to acknowledge people. A, a couple people were concerned when we were uh, doing this is because uh, uh, in, in some of the other negotiations for fire stations and buying uh, older buildings, there was a, a kind of an endless uh, fight to try to keep the cost down and the cost has, has been overrun and one of the things about it is that we had negotiated in advance how much the price would be with an updated uh, building that they could go in and, 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 and put their fire trucks in. Now they're going to still have some more work to do to completely modernize it but it'll be uh, fire department ready uh, whenever, uh, whenever the, the purchase comes about and so that's very important and I'd like to thank Gene and uh, all the rest of the fire uh, district people uh, with, uh, uh, of course, James LeBron, but uh, also uh, uh, Randy Gotro and, and Doug uh, Diaz stepped forward and, and really worked hard to try to make this happen, and it was just a good cooperation from a lot of people to make this happen and keep the cost down. Yes, uh, this purchase price does include $150,000 of renovations that are going to be done on the building by the developer. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Johnson. Benny Johnson. Not a question, but uh, uh, just some information. Uh, part of this as well has been a long-standing uh, effort, uh, something that was <coughs> suggested or recommended through property insurance through one of our radios and recognizing this area as in need of a station. So this is something that's been going on for a number of years of trying to uh, find a location and acquire the property in order to uh, have a station there that would help out with the rating once it comes to fruition. So it's a, it's a good move on the fire district's part to get something in that area. And the uh, previous item of uh, purchasing the fire trucks will allow us to uh, move one, one of the trucks, existing trucks from the station to there. So we will have apparatus for all the stations, including this new one. Any other questions? Yes, Jim, just to reflect back on the previous thing with the fire trucks. Mm -hmm. For the folks at home, uh, moving forward, path forward right now, uh, when do you expect to see those trucks hitting? <coughs> hitting the well, the, the specs are all developed uh, as soon as the uh, process of uh, doing the getting the bonds sold, uh, and we're ready to go uh, place the order. These will be purchased through uh, the Lamas uh, program, where you can cut out the time of the bid. Yeah. So that, that's all been done. Once the finance is in order, we can place the order for those trucks. So if everything goes smooth, 
you know, by the end of the summer, we'll have these trucks in place. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Uh, yeah. Uh, on the discussions from the past president's request, uh, I would suggest, uh, uh, Chairman, that we go ahead and, and vote for the approval of the purchase and then add an item under the introductions of artists, uh, 11A maybe, that uh, we use it as an introduction. I think we, ju we did that a while ago. I'd ask that we can. Okay. 11A is, uh, we need is, is a roll call so we can add it to the agenda. Okay. Okay. But okay. So add it on the, uh, All right. Uh, yeah. Madam Secretary, we have a roll call to add item 9B as an introduction of ordinance to the agenda. <coughs> Yes. 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 Thank you. We will move that to agenda item nine C. Well, uh, introduction of ordinance for the purchase of Pelican Point maintenance building for a fire department substation and fire district. So I move. Move. We have a motion by Mr. Shakespeare. Second. Second by Mr. Valentine. Any discussion? <coughs> Any opposition? Ordinance moved. Introduced. We we'll move. Move on to agenda item number 10, general business, approval of John Lear as hearing officer for Ascension Parish Administrative Adjudication This is a, Adjudication court. Been a long, ongoing process to get to where we are today. Uh, basically, we're still not there. We want to uh, introduce some uh, legislation in the upcoming session uh, to make it even stronger. Uh, we want to make sure that once we start this court system that uh, we can go ahead and enforce the codes and the ordinances that we do have on the books and hopefully clean up our parish uh, from junk cars, litter, and uh, things like that and enforce all of our ordinances. So, uh, Mr. Lear, uh, we've talked to him on several occasions and uh, we went through several uh, processes uh, and he graciously accepted uh, to do the job as the hearing officer. So okay. we'll we have a motion by Mr. Thompson. Second. Uh, second by Mr. Mr. Shakespeare. Pick a name. Wouldn't pass me. Question. Discussion. Mr. Law. Uh, Mr. President, how, how, what's the soonest uh, <coughs> that, uh, that we, depending on, I guess, best case scenario, uh, that he could start hearing some cases for us? Tony, you want to give us a little scenario on that? Thank you. And you're saying that you got 30 or 40 cases on the books right now. Any other discussion? I want to make sure that Mr. Lear is going to cancel some of his fishing trips so that he comes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I, I'd just like to thank on behalf of that. Uh, Councilman Shakes and the administration and everybody that served on the strategic planning and uh, worked hard on that. And I think you guys that's in here for more than one term, you guys have been working this for a couple of terms trying to get it squared up. Uh, so hopefully it's all squared up to where when we hit the road, we'll be playing. Got any further discussion? Any opposition? Clear the point. Move on to uh, agenda item number 11. We're going to introduction of ordinance. Item number 11, introduction of ordinance to amend the Ascension Parish zoning map from medium density residential to mixed use two, lot 11, Tanglewood subdivision for Paul and Martha Johnson, located on the north side of LA 621, approximately 200 feet west of L. Landry Road. I have a motion, motion by Mr. Todd Lambert to introduce, second by Mr. Benny Johnson. 
ordinance is introduced. Next, we'll move into the public hearing ordinance. Mr. Chair, before we get into the reading of the ordinance, I need to add something. Okay. I'd like to amend the uh, affidavits that you have before you to the uh, Keystone Agreement as Exhibit 8. 8? 8. 8 is an apple. Okay. 8 is an apple. Do we have some explanation for Exhibit A? Yeah. We'll read the ordinance. Yeah. I'd like you to read this first. Okay. Um, Whatever's legal. Whatever's legal. <laughs> Madam Falkman, can you get to a microphone? I think it's, I, I think we understand that the public can't hear you at all. Okay, I'm sorry. That's fine. Okay. I can't open my door. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, whereas Ascension Parish is a local governmental subdivision as defined by Article 6, Section 44 of the Louisiana Constitution of 1974, and whereas the Parish of Ascension is the governing and responsible body over the zoning and regulations within this jurisdiction, and whereas the developmental agreement is prepared consistent with authority of Louisiana Revised Statute 334780.21 Subport and Appendix 6, Section 17-6010B of the Ascension Parish LDC. And whereas Keystone of Galvez, LLC, the owner of the Keystone of Galvez development property, has submitted and received an approval with conditions on the concept plan identified as Keystone of Galvez PUD by the Parish Council with conditions on May 6, 2010. And whereas the Keystone of Galvez PUD was processed and approved consistent with Appendix 6 of the Ascension Parish Unified Land Development Code. Whereas the final development plan was reviewed and approved by the Planning Commission on October 13, 2010. And whereas the parish and owner come to an agreement to permit and regulate a large-scale development identified as Keystone of Galvez PUD, and said agreement's conditions, obligations, and otherwise terms are outlined below. Now, therefore, be it ordained, the following considerations, terms, conditions, and obligations are agreed to, understood, and accepted by the owner. Owners shall construct sidewalks from the PUD limits to common areas as designated on the final development plan. These sidewalks, four, inch, four feet foot wide concrete, shall be constructed prior to and inspected with the final inspection of that filing. Each sidewalk stretch will be constructed with the adjacent filing as shown on the final development plan. Home builders shall construct four four foot wide sidewalks with each home prior to CO from side property line to property line adjacent to the front boundary within the appropriate sidewalk easement. The sidewalk shall be placed within the five feet wide sidewalk easement adjacent to the 12 feet utility servitude. Homeowners association documents shall include the necessary language to require that each lot construct sidewalks with the construction of competition of each lot. The sidewalk shall be the property of the homeowners association and the homeowners association document shall reflect the necessary maintenance and liability language. The sidewalk shall be constructed meeting the ADA standards. The sidewalk shall be constructed using 3,500 PSI concrete, four inches thick. 
The, t the sidewalk shall have expansion joints every 24 feet with control joints every 6 feet. Developer shall place the three-foot landscape servitude adjacent to the road right away on each plat throughout the development. Street trees shall be installed by the home builders within the three-feet landscape servitude prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy by the parish. Each lot shall have at least one street tree within the three-feet landscape servitude. Street trees shall be planted as close to center of the lot as the driveway will allow. Street trees shall be a minimum of 2.5 inch caliper measured 4 foot 6 inches above the root ball at the time of planting. The tree planting schedule shall adhere to the following. Schumwood Oak, Timberstone Drive, Yellowstone Drive, Baystone Avenue, Pebblestone Avenue, Lakeshore Drive, and Keystone Boulevard. Swamp Red Maple, Quartstone Drive, Quarterstone Avenue, Jadestone Avenue, and Mossy Stone Drive. Green Ash, Marblestone Avenue, Magic Stone Drive, Tiger's Eye Stone Avenue, and Harborstone Avenue. Walking trails shall be constructed by owner prior to final inspection of the applicable site <coughs> as depicted on the final development plan. Walking trails shall be four feet wide by three inches thick and cut into the existing ground and shall be constructed of aggregates. Recreation Park. Owner shall dedicate track CH1 on the sixth filing plat and the dedication to the public for use as a park recreational area. Prior to the seventh filing, owner shall donate a sum of $10,000 to the parish to be used towards the construction of a recreational playground on track CH1 when their total budget so allows it. Owner shall dedicate 2.0 acres of land as identified in Exhibit C to Fire District 1 for the purposes of building a fire station. This shall be done by a quick claim deed recorded in the clerk of court prior to approval of the final plat of the fourth filing. Owner has completed the following traffic improvements as per the original traffic impact study. An eastbound right turn lane on LA 933 at Keystone Boulevard has been constructed. Stop signs were provided to Ascension Parish Department of Public Works to install at LA 932 and Duval <coughs> Road when traffic count warrant the improvement. A contribution of $104,625 was paid to Ascension Parish for the road improvement spelled out in the traffic study that is to be used to fund the installation of traffic signal at the intersection of LA 933 and LA 932 when traffic counts warrant the improvement. Signal timing modifications at LA 44 at Causey Road, Merritt Evans has been impl implemented. A westbound right turn lane on LA 933 and signal timing modifications at LA 933 at LA 44 have been completed. Owners shall permit and construct an eastbound right turn lane on LA 933 at the retail entrance as part of the commercial development permit. Owners shall, before the approval of the final plat of the seventh filing, have an updated traffic impact study completed to analyze the necessity of the following traffic improvements. A westbound left turn lane on LA 933 at Keystone Boulevard, a northbound right turn lane on LA 44 at Causey Road, Merritt Evans Road, signal timing modifications at LA 44 at Causey Road, Merritt Evans Road, a southbound left turn lane on LA 44 at LA 933 Parker Road. The funding for these improvements shall be provided by both the owner and parish. The existing traffic impact study states that this improvement is not only required for traffic generated by this development, but also based on existing traffic demands as a protected left turn phase exists today. The construction cost will be determined according to public bid laws. The cost sharing percentages for engineering design and construction shall be based on total projected trips using these improvements generated by this development compared to other areas as determined in the future traffic study that will be paid for by the owner. The owner's portion shall be a minimum of 50000 but shall not to exceed 150000 Signal timing modification at LA 44 at LA 933 Parker Road. Any traffic improvement required in said study above shall be included and approved with the construction plans of the eighth filing. Owner shall be responsible for maintenance of the common areas such as until such time a homeowner's association is created and legally takes over that responsibility. 
Owner shall not use the vile road for construction traffic to construct subdivision filing. Owner shall ensure that each phase of filing adheres to the approved drainage impact study. And further, the following considerations, terms, conditions, and obligations are agreed to, understood, and accepted by the parish. The recreation park on track CH1 will be constructed and maintained after dedication of the property, receipt of $10,000 from owner, and when the additional funds become available for the recreation department. Variances have been granted to from the current Unified Land Development Code as follows. Section 17.40.40a of the LDC block lists for the street running north-south adjacent to first filing in the northern portion of the project site. Section 17.40.40b of the LDC pedestrian crosswalk between homes every 750 feet to what deemed appropriate by parish staff not to exceed one every 750 feet. Lot width, Table B, from minimum 70 feet wide to 50 feet wide, with curb and gutter only in locations identified on the master plan. No lot shall be smaller in width than 50 feet as measured by the code. Section 17602B, any future amendment to the plan shall never contain multifamily dwelling units. Section 17604, the Keystone Pledge Zoning District shall be limited to 507 lots. Section 174032C, there shall be no vehicle connection with Pine Lake Drive. Parish grants flood zoning approval contingent with the uh, density, setback heights, lane uses, etc., as outlined in the approved master plan ordinance ZM10-01. Parish will participate in cost sharing for the left turn lane on Highway 44 at Parker Road. The construction cost will be determined according to public bid laws. The cost-sharing percentages for engineering design and construction shall be based on total projected trips using these improvements generated by this development compared to other areas as determined in the future traffic study that will be paid for by the owner. The parish will pay all costs according to these percentages, but will pay all costs above $150,000 as the owner's portion shall not exceed this. And what um, Dempsey was referring to earlier, is I received an affidavit from the developer's attorney today. Um, it says, before me, the undersigned authority and in the presence of the undersigned witnesses personally came and appeared, Keystone of Galvez, LLC, a Louisiana limited liability company domiciled in East Baton Rouge, LA, having a permanent mailing address of PO Box 8296, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70898 represented by its member manager, Kevin Wynn, who after being duly sworn deposed as follows. Keystone, as the owner of the Keystone Development Property, has submitted and received an approval on the concept plan identified as Keystone of Galvez Plan Union Development by the Ascension Parish Council. An ordinance was introduced to the council for approval of a developer agreement by and between Keystone and the Parish of Ascension that is coming up for a vote of the council on January 6, 2011. Keystone has caused to be submitted in its behalf letters from its counsel, David M. Cohn, dated respectively December 23, 2010, January 5, 2011, and January 6, 2011, that are adopted herein by reference thereto, on the condition that the developer agreement before the council for vote is approved by the council on January 6, 2011, Keystone will make as part of the restrictive covenants imposed on the land compromising the Keystone Plain Unit Development the following three restrictions. One, any resident built on any lot shall have a two-car garage at a minimum. And two, all residences built on any lot must have at least brick or masonry material on the entire front wall of the residence except for light fixtures, doors, and windows. Three, no residence can be a manufactured home. Keystone makes the above representations gratuitously and does not do so feeling that this is in some way mandated by the development code or by law to do so. And then it says, thus done, read, and signed at Baton Rouge, Louisiana, this sixth day of January 2011 in the presence of the witnesses. And we have Kevin Nguyen's signature, two witnesses, and the notary public. Thank you. All right. So move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Open for public hearing. Mr. Lambert. Yes, sir. Second by Mr. Cullen. We have some speakers on this uh, this item. 
First, we'll have Lance Mayo. Good evening. When the homeowners bought the Keystone of Galapagos, we bought into a subdivision with restrictions provided by the developer, Kevin Wynn. Restrictions about minimum square footage of homes and minimum architectural structure. For example, 7 on 12 roof pitch, 1,100 square foot homes, 1,600 brick, 60% brick exterior, two car garages. Now that the parish is involved in Keystone of Galvez, we ask the same restrictions be applied to the PUD within Keystone of Galvez. You all have the responsibility to apply the rules within the Ascension Parish Unified Land Development Code, Appendix 6, stating an, an improved planned unit development shall be cons consisted to be a separate zoning district within the development plan as approved, establish the restrictions and regulations according to which development shall occur and may depart from natural procedures, standards, and other requirements of other restrictions of zoning ordinance and subdivision regulations to extend provided therein. We trust that the Parish Council and Planning and Development have a non-bias in determining the restrictions and regulations related to the PUD of Keystone Galvez. We trust that you have safeguard our investments as you would safeguard yours. We trust that you can police and enforce restrictions and regulations in the PUD. Again, the PUD allows an addition of 171 blocks without a variance of blocks for the frontage of 70 foot. It benefits Paris through road improvements. I hope that you do not only protect a development, uh, provide the parish with improvements, and support profit of future builders within Keystone of Galvez. I hope you safeguarded our investments also. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Ms. Ashley Mayo. Hi, I'm Ashley Mo. Um, thank you guys for letting us speak this evening. Um, this has been a whirlwind trip for us, for the residents of Keystone. Um, I hope that after tonight we can look at how PUDs are handled in Ascension Parish, and I hope that we can make the process a bit more transparent and learn from what's happened to us in Keystone. I am with the residents in believing that um, the parish is going. That the, I'm with the residents and that the parish can add jobs. They can police restrictions. The parish is going to gain a lot from what the developer has to offer, and with what you're going to gain, you're going to save in road improvements in the park. And I believe that if you have to create a job to police restrictions, as we've been asking, then that's something that the parish needs to do to protect our investment and to protect us as your citizens. We have been graciously approached by the developer, by um, the engineering firm, our councilmen, and other representatives of the parish yesterday in regards to the December 23rd letter that was written in regards to Keystone of Galvez. There were negotiations that were made and concessions that were made. They have been put in the affidavit that Ms. Tony has read, and we do ask that y'all consider that affidavit this evening. But I, in the same respect, I also urge every one of Ascension Parish if a PUD is introduced in your neighborhood to do your homework and to make sure that you stay on top of these guys. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We have uh, Mr. Matthew Monson. How are you doing, Councilman? Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, on December 16th, uh, many of the residents of Keystone stood before you. We told you our side, how uh, we were interested in protecting our investments, how uh, the PUD was already passed, the concept plan. We knew that we were looking for something. I stood before you and I urged if we could find something to give 
concessions to us to help protect our investment throughout this process. Uh, and we, that did take place. The developer did meet with us. Uh, our quality engineering representing the developer did meet with us. Uh, councilman from District 5 met with us along with the builder. Concessions were made. Um, we are thankful for those concessions. Uh, we ask that the council please pass the affidavit tonight uh, attached to the developer's agreement and also pass the developer's agreement as well. Um, the residents of Keystone did get together last night and have a meeting and we discussed this and uh, we do feel comfortable with what has been presented before us. Uh, so we would like to say thank you for those and also we would like to say thank you. Uh, the developer uh, has said that after this process is over, he'd agree to meet with us. So we're thankful for that as well. So um, this entire process has been long and tiring for us, but we are uh, comfortable with the outcome that has been reached. So we ask that you pass the affidavit and pass the developer's agreement. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next we have Mr. Derek Murphy. <coughs> My name is Derek Murphy of Quality Engineering and Surveying, representing the owner, Keystone and Galvez. The process for approval of Keystone and Galvez Plan Unit Development began in April 2010 with the submittal of the Plan Unit Development Concept Plan to the Planning Commission. On March 10th, the Planning Commission recommended approval, and on May 6th, this council approved the Plan Unit Development Concept Plan. The Planning Commission approved the final development plan for the developer's agreement and the this development developer's agreement. On October 13th, the developer of this subdivision has adhered to all laws and regulations has, and has obtained all necessary approvals set forth by the parish of Ascension to this point. The developer agreement is a fundamental piece to the plan unit development process that helps protect both the developer and the people of Ascension. During the past 10 months, many concessions, stipulations, and agreements have been made between the developer and the parish. This agreement outlines those items and makes them legally binding between the developer and Ascension Parish. This is a unique characteristic to the plan unit development that standard subdivisions do not share. On December 7th, uh, Parish President Johnny Morton asked Councilman District 5, Ricky Compton, and representatives from DSLD, Homes, several homeowners of Keystone and Galvez subdivision, and I met to discuss the developer agreement and the Keystone and Galvez plan unit development. During this meeting, residents expressed concerns about architectural elements of houses both within the existing subdivision and the plan unit development. Representatives from the parish notified the residents that the developer agreement pertains to public improvements and not private property. The rep representatives from DSLD and I assured the residents that the developer would meet with them to discuss their concerns at a later date. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank parish president and councilman and all those that were involved in that meeting to make this process uh, go as smoothly as, as it could be. Uh, since that meeting, since that time, the developer has agreed to conce two concessions, which uh, Tony uh, read, I won't bore y'all with that again. Uh, but these concessions address many of the concerns of the residents that attended on the December 7th meeting. As late as yesterday, uh, we had another meeting with Councilman Dempsey Lambert, representatives from DSLD Homes, and several homeowners of Keystone and Galvez subdivision. We met to discuss the developer agreement and the Keystone of Galvez plan unit development in further detail. During this meeting, representatives from DSLD Homes offered to write a letter of intent which stated their minimum building standards on lots they presently own in the subdivision that is outside the PUD and those lots that they may own in the future. This letter was written and distributed today. The developer also offered his concessions in form of a sworn affidavit as read here tonight. The concessions from the developer and DSLD seem to have satisfied the residents attending the meeting. However, I hope tonight uh, they will get up and speak as one of already, already has. We hope that you approve this agreement tonight since, in my opinion, all parties have gone above and beyond the typical requirements of the parish. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next we have Mr. Kenny Mayer. Good evening. Good evening. It's been an interesting uh, past year for me, my neighbors, a 
Timberlake Estates and residents of Keystone. I appreciate what the council did for Timberlake Estates in stopping the connectivity, but mostly I want to thank my neighbors who attended meetings and my neighbors and friends who contacted their council members in this issue for their help. After viewing the last council meeting, I felt that I should address the council and the viewing audience. From what I see has happened with Keystone, the Planning and Zoning Subcommittee has a lot of work to do concerning subdivision regulations and restrictions, whatever you want to call it, that have more teeth. We need them. I say this from experience because Timberlake Estates was developed years ago and nothing was done and nothing was done as permitted as, perm as promised by the developer. And residents were told it was a civil matter. But anyway, here we are. Mr. Developer, you got your additional lots, okay? That should help you with your money pinch or whatever. Because I've been following this for almost a year now. Okay. Although I still have some problems with the April 1st and March 6th council meeting and the way administration staff council handled it, but I guess that's water under the Keystone Bridge. <laughs> Mr. Developer, work out your work out the problems you have with your residents at Keystone, which I think y'all have. And I appreciate that. Maybe if you would have been a little more Maybe if there would have been a little more contact last year with the residents of Keystone, we would not be here today. I think everyone in the council, administration, planning and zoning, staff of planning, and Ascension Parish residents learned a lot this year. I sure did. And if you didn't, you wasn't paying attention. Okay? And remember this. All of y'all sitting in the chairs. Uh, when you go knocking on doors next year, you're going to have a lot of questions, and you're going to have a lot of replies that you're probably not going to like. And I thank you. Thank you. Next we have Tiffany Poche. Hi. I'd first like to thank you guys for allowing us to speak on this matter tonight. This has been a very long journey for us, as a few people have mentioned. Um, I'd like to take a minute to just kind of summarize the journey in which we've been on. Some of us found out about the PUD in the early stages and didn't want it, but I was one of the ones that didn't know about the PUD in the early stages. So when I did find out about the PUD and I did voice my concerns, it was too late. So from that time, we had to figure out what was the plan to try to make the best out of this situation. We had a lot of different things being thrown at us. Um, we had a lot of, lot of conversations with um, our council member, number five, um, and he has been very helpful in these past few days. Um, We've had meetings with the parish, the parish president, Mr. Ricky Compton. Um, in those meetings, the parish has agreed to provide a park when the developer provides the funds, and the developer has agreed to provide the funds as soon as the parish is ready to accept the funds. Um, so that's one of the concessions that isn't in this, but I wanted to bring it to you, your attention. Um, they've also agreed to put the rumble strips in our, on our roads to help with the traffic and the speed. Um, more recently, we had meetings with the builder, DSLD, Mr. Derrick from Quality Engineering, Ms. Council Member Number 5, and um, I don't remember. I'm sure there was other people there. Um, anyway, the builder did agree to some concessions 
and this is I this isn't really a matter for you guys but I did feel that it was very important for us to bring up tonight because it is a very key point to why we are asking you to agree to this tonight and those are that he intends to build at least a 1600 living area and three-sided brick and stucco house with two car garages on the front part I'm not going to read the lot numbers but on the front part of the subdivision he that he already owns and that he intends to buy or that will possibly buy in the future. He intends to build a 1,500 living area, 25% brick and stucco house with a two-car garage on, there's this, this little back strip. Again, I'm not going to read you the lot numbers. Um, he intends to build a two-car garage with 25% brick and stucco with lots um, on all the lots currently developed. Um, and 1,100 minimum square footage for the back the very back section and a 1300 minimum square footage for the middle section which is going back to our original restrictions which we had in our restriction packets when we moved into the subdivision so we did appreciate that so at this point we are wanting to ask you to pass the amendment book before you today thank you thank you next we have Tim Terrio Good evening, Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the council. Uh, I come before you tonight asking y'all to consider a possible change in our process. Uh, I've been to several of these meetings in the last few months, and I see very little protection for our residents when it comes to development right now. When the initial development goes to planning and zoning and it gets approved, Afterwards, they can go ahead and decide they want to make a change with the next phase or something like that. Initially, the residents whose property adjoin the, uh, the development are notified, and they can go to a public hearing. Once there's changes made, there's no longer anything in there that says that neighboring residents or adjacent property owners are notified once again. And the first time they have knowledge of it, a lot of times is we have to come before the council and express our opposition to it. So I'm asking if y'all would consider either through this commission, through uh, y'all's area or through the commission to put something in there where when there's changes made or we go to a meeting and we see where development is passed with turn lanes and stuff like that, something to prevent them from going back to the parish Afterwards, and all of a sudden, we find out that the parish decided, okay, we met with the developer, and we're no longer going to require y'all to put a turn lane. And the residents are just lost, left in the dark. I'd appreciate if y'all would consider some type of uh, an ordinance or something in the commission to try to prevent that in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Mr. Casey Dupont. Good evening, gentlemen. I live in uh, Old Homestead next to Keystone. And I think back to early last year, uh, we sat here and talked about the FUD uh, concept approval, which we were opposed to. We were told by our councilman as whether, uh, in addition to other councilmen, and one of the advantages to the FUD was that it allowed the parish to control what was built inside of that PUD when it came to building materials. They told us without that PUD protection, it would just be a free-for-all. And they were right, because if you look at the first two um, uh, filings in there now, they got seven sets of building restrictions. And I'm happy for the folks over there that they've, they've made some headway in, in hopefully curbing that moving forward. But you can imagine my surprise when I was told by uh, the folks we've been talking to over there that the planning zone told them that the parish isn't in the business of building restrictions. So, I, you know, uh, the section of the PUD code was already read. I'm going to read another little piece, uh, 176012. The applicant shall record development restrictions and other required documents which pertain to a subdivision within 
the approved final development plan. Um, and, and, you know, we can't have it both ways. I mean, if we're going to have a PUD, we got to follow the code. If we're not going to follow the code, we can't have a PUD. Um, you know, the final agreement, I, I just find this comical, has extensive language about trees and sidewalks. I mean, Tony read the different types of trees, so we can talk about what kind of trees we plant, but we can't talk about what we can't put in there, the building restrictions. That's the one thing that protects property values. So uh, it, it puzzles me a little bit. I'm happy that the, the affidavit was done. Uh, personally, I think that should be part of the, and I know we're going to make it part of it. I think it should be, should have been there from the beginning. So, uh, you know, I'm asking y'all to, uh, to, to pass the, uh, the agreement, include the building restrictions, um, to protect us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Vicki Anderman. Vicki Anderman. <clears throat> I appreciate the concessions that were made. My son bought a home in Keystone about four weeks ago. And, I mean, we just, as a mother, he, he doesn't live here. He lives in Texas, and he wants to come back because he was born and raised in Ascension Park. And um, I know that you have to worry about your home values being decreased and all, but my concern is safety. Because when he was a child, he had cancer. He was a St. Jean patient for 12 years, and he worked hard. And in May, he graduated from LSU in mechanical engineering, and he fought for his life. And now, you know, he bought a home. He's getting married. He wants to come back. And I'm really grateful because when I found out about it, you know, as a mother, you will always worry about your children from when they this little to when they're this big. You know, so it was like when I first found out about the first proposal, I was like, there I go, worrying again, you know, but I know this is hard on everybody. I know y'all are good people. Y'all don't want anything bad to happen to people. And I wouldn't want to be on that side for anything in the world. But these people back here, they came, I, I watched meetings. It was like, it was almost like a lynch mob. And I'm like, wait, these are not bad people. They're just fighting for what they've worked hard for. And it's not just the, the property values, it's the... The safety, to be able to have your children, be able to go on the sidewalk and play and not worry about crime. Because when he was a patient at St. Jude, he had a high-dose chemo treatment one day, and he got deathly sick at midnight, and I had to run back to St. Jude with him. And he was dying, and somebody tried to carjack us on the interstate in Memphis. And when I got back to the hospital, I said, why would you put a hospital that takes care of sick children amongst all of these mess. It was crime, and it was just rentals and single units, and, you know, and I'm not saying that people shouldn't have a right to have a good life, you know, but the worry that sometimes these small units bring crime in your neighborhood, and the lady told me, oh, we were here first. That came after we got here. And it was just, you could see, we're not used to that. We country people. You could see drug deals. You could see prostitution. And it's just, I'm so grateful that we could come to some kind of agreement because this is a great, great parish. And I was, I'm proud. I'm born and raised here. I'm retired. I was a postmaster in Sorrento for 10 years. And not only that, it taxes the postal service with just such an influx. And I'm just, I hope we can watch it for the, any others that come into this parish because the basic thing, the most important thing is our families. And I appreciate anything that can be done. Thank you. Next we have Mr. Greg DePlastic. Thank you all. That's a, that's a tough speaker to follow right there. That was a, that was tough. Uh, can't make a stronger delivery from the heart than what I just heard. And so uh, I hope y'all are listening real close to all of this. I've been following this Keystone for quite some time now, and, and there's a lot of people along with myself. I'm from District 8. There's people from, from other districts besides District 5 that are real interested, and we're, we're very concerned 
about the final resolution of what's going to happen with this keystone. I was privileged to be welcomed to the neighborhood meeting last night in Keystone. And although it was a, a mad scramble to make it happen, uh, there apparently was a really productive meeting prior to the meeting I attended amongst the, uh, the developer and the builder and the residents and I think some parish officials. And I applaud everybody for their efforts in such a tight time frame to, to come to what I think is a very reasonable, not perfect, I'll, I'll, I'll say it's not perfect, but it's at least a reasonable resolution uh, that the residents seem happy and it, it looks like the developer and the builders are really trying hard to work this out. And that's what we've been asking for and hoping for because this, this is going to set a precedence and decide how we're going to handle future developments because there's, there's more developments to come. And so I'm, I'm real pleased and, and appreciative of all the effort, anybody involved in everything that went on yesterday. What I'm not so pleased with, as always a little bad, is the timing because it's my understanding that the letter of concessions has been in existence since at least December 23rd. And I realize we've been through the holidays, but I was not aware that parish government shut down for the entire week. And so it, it bothers me that an issue as, as big as Keystone has been for the last six months, that so many days went by with this letter being available, and it was only yesterday that real activity started. And so here we are tonight scrambling to get the documentation right to make sure that everything is as discussed and promised and that it's done correctly. So I'm here tonight to tell you, you have a chance to do something really remarkable and that's get it right this time and do what these people want because it looks like the developer and the builder are, are doing their part. So don't miss this opportunity to do it right tonight. Thank you. Next we have Mr. Captain Gossett. Thank you. I am Catherine Guppel. Kevin Wynn, spelled N-G-U-Y-E-N, -E owner and developer of Keystone of Galvez, including the PUD, being considered for the final approval tonight. An East Baton Rouge company doing business in Ascension Parish. Derek Murphy of Quality Engineering associated with the PUD. And Sean Sullivan of DSLD Builders, the builder of Keystone. We will hear these names in the future. Let the public remember these names. On December 16th, property owners in Keystone informed you the developer would not come to the table. On December 23rd, the letter which has been referred to from the developer, agreeing to concessions, was not given to the residents until just yesterday. The press had this letter two days before. This is unacceptable, unprofessional, and clearly shows that the planning department and the administration have been unwilling to work with residents. When the builder met yesterday with the residents, more of their concerns were addressed in a written document with all concessions now on the table was promised by noon today. Councilman Dempsey Lambert, you are to be commended for your efforts in negotiating these concessions. However, the document was not delivered to the residents for review. Residents somehow do not believe you really can be trusted to protect the interests of the public. Prove them wrong tonight. In my hand is documentation related to one council and his association with quality engineering and a contract this engineering firm now has with Ascension Parish Council. Ethics code prohibits a public servant from participating in a transaction involving his government entity in which he has a substantial economic interest. If required to vote on a matter in violation of this code, he must recuse himself. He may participate in discussion and debate concerning the matter, provided that he verbally discloses the nature of the conflict or potential conflict prior to the vote being taken. This is not being done or has not been done in past meetings. This is the law. It should be followed. The public in this council should know why Councilman Shake Snyder must be continually recusing himself. A letter from the developer's attorney makes it clear that concessions now on the table are contingent on the vote tonight. Developers, government, and public 
should all be part of these proceedings from the beginning. The process is surely flawed, what we've experienced. It's a roller coaster ride for the residents, and it should not be that way. I request that these comments and the documentation attached be placed in the meeting minutes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to agenda item. I don't think we have any other speakers. Move to close the Move to close by Mr. Valentine. Second by Mr. Todd Lambert. We close. We now head to uh, put on the ordinance development of the agree development agreement for Keystone Pride. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I move the ordinance with the Exhibit A added to the uh, development agreement. We have a motion by Mr. Dempsey Lambert. Second. Second by Mr. Dennis Cullen. In discussion. Yes, Mr. Valentine. Um, I, I, I do have a question about... Um, the agreement. As most of the residents says, uh, Mr. Councilman Lambert did a good job, a great job, in fact, uh, in trying to work out the uh, agreements, and I appreciate that. But number three says no residents can be a manufactured home. Mr. Crompton, can you explain that to me? Can you explain what a manufactured home is? Per our code or per the definition, or why is it even here? In this agreement, I didn't write the agreement, so I would assume that they mean manufactured housing, meaning housing that's not stick built on site. That's exactly. And that refers to what now? Say again. It's housing that's not stick built on site. Housing that's brought in prefabricated to the property. Okay, which does not include mobile homes, right? I would it's assume. A mobile yes. Okay. A mobile home so, is so what, you, what you're telling me is. A manufactured case. home can be placed in a pud. Say that again? You're telling me a manufactured home can be placed in a pud? A manufactured home can be placed on any legally created lot in this parish. The pud is placing a development restriction to not allow it. Well, I'm, I'm asking you, though. In other words, what you said, because this councilman didn't know this. That's why I'm, I'm admitting my failure to understand what our regulations. In other words, you're saying our subdivision code and a PUD, if they wanted to put it, unless it's stipulated, that you can't put a manufactured home in it, they can do it. Is that what you're telling me? I'm, I'm telling you that any legally created lot in this parish can have a manufactured house on it, correct? That's amazing. And how long have you known that? Because I didn't. I, I, I would. Any of you other councilmen knew that? Yeah. It's always been that way. And you can just put no where they could just sure. plot a house in it. Sure. Drive around this parish. Now, and point. They got a lot in there that can just put a mobile home in it. In where? Pelican Point. I would imagine that Pelican Point may have a restriction that prohibits that type of housing. Only if it has a restriction. Correct. Okay. That's my point. But the subdivision before this PUD, so our PUD ordinance doesn't specifically say that. So it's a flaw in the PUD ordinance. Is that what you're telling I mean. I'm asking. If I'm somebody asking. wanted to build a manufactured housing PUD, you would say no? I mean, it's mm -hmm. somebody's right to do that. Uh, yeah, I'd say no, but that's beside the point. Well, I would say I mean, no I mean, as well. But, but if it's a combination of situations. I just find it odd that it's in the agreement. And and, and, and I just want an explanation, and I'll thank you. you I'm, I'm done. The, the, the point I'm trying to make is I, I do have mixed emotions, and, and I, even though I said uh, that I wasn't going to vote for this, but I, because of the residents and because they, they, they want it and they want the affidavit and they want the agreement, I'm going to yield to the residents of, of Keystone. Um, I'm sorry and I apologize the fact that they had to go through the situation to even get to this point because it's really ridiculous because it appears that the PUD ordinance, along with our subdivision ordinance, doesn't favor the citizens of this parish. It favors only developers. And it's getting more and more relevant as we continue. It gets more and more relevant as we continue to... Um, to, to, to approve PUDs, and I, I will make this one. This will be the last one that I approve. I will say that this, this councilman here will not approve another PUD. In fact, I'm, I'm going to do my best as a councilman to make sure that we reverse PUDs and just do away with the ordinance of a PUD <laughs> and, and, tight, and, and tighten up 
yeah. and, and restrict our subdivision rules and regulations. And I've had some conversations with the plan and zoning uh, guys, and uh, they're going to they're, they're, they're still on pace to set up this subcommittee, and hopefully they'll take this issue up quickly and with the spirit of the citizens at heart, and uh, so that this council don't have to go through it, because the only arguments we've been doing in the last couple of years have been over PUDs, and that's ridiculous. Uh, and, and, and it's only because land has skyrocketed, people have bought property, now the economy is down, and developers can't make a, a living. And I don't deny a developer living, but it's just like taking a risk. When you take a risk on a piece of property and you pay for it, you're going to have to eat it. You can't come and let this council make sure that you make a profit. And that's what's happening in this case. That's what's happening. So, Mr. Chairman, I do, I do applaud Mr. Uh, Mr. Lambert for his uh, activities, uh, and I appreciate that, and I'm glad he's able to work this out. But let me warn citizens here and citizens in the future. You guys got an agreement, but the only agreement you got is what's in the right. Anything the builder told you, anything else, you don't have it. I can tell you. So when you doesn't do it, this council's not responsible. That's what I'm voting on. I'm voting on this agreement. Unless it's in writing to where we vote on it and putting it in ordinance, you don't have a guarantee with it at all. Thank you, Chair. Are you finished, sir? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Shakespeare. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, a couple of things I'll answer, though. The, the lady that inquired about me uh, participating in discussions and uh, uh, disclosure, uh, every time I have uh, discussed, I, I have disclosed uh, uh, my participation with uh, quality engineering. I, I do work in out of the parish on elevation jobs uh, to get people out of the floodplain, and they do the design for the foundation so people can have their houses lifted. And uh, all the work is done out of the parish, and quite frankly, it's very, fairly small uh, contracts comparatively. But uh, that's been going on for a couple of years. Not hard with that, and I've done any work in the parish with anyone. So uh, we'll continue to do that, uh, quite simply because they've been producing. Uh, so no problem. One of the things that we Please don't forget, we're here right now because we've been having problems for years and years and years with our subdivision regulations and enforcing them. Because this parish council has no power to enforce something if the developers change. As this past year I saw in my district in River Ridge, when people bought into the subdivision at a certain price, they spent their hard-earned money, they built their house, of their dreams, and then in midstream, the developer, who was also the review group, decided to change the rules of the subdivision and built houses that were fifty to hundred thousand dollars cheaper than them and put them next to each other, and they devalued a the piece of property. In our subdivisions, by law, we have no power to do that. The only thing we could tell them was that it's a civil matter. And each of these individual peoples were individuals having to fight. And, and that has happened over and over and over and over again. It happened in Keystone from one uh, section to the next. As you saw the quality going on down, it was brought about many, many, many times. That was the thought behind trying to put the next step in where we could back the parish government standing behind the people that bought into a subdivision and give them something that they didn't have to hire their own lawyer to do. That was the reason behind us establishing the put ordinance. To give you that development agreement, that would protect you, just as you said tonight. Now, there's some problems in it. There's some problems in us implementing, but as we, until we went through the process of which we really have now, I, you know, I, I, look, I studied it as much as possible, but I want to tell you, you couldn't predict everything that was going to happen, and you might have, you know, the uh, uh, 100,000 fans from Wisconsin wish they'd have run the ball on the two-point conversion over there after it's over. Well, it was implemented, recommended by 
the Planning and Zoning Commission passed by the parish in order to try to protect the people of Ascension Parish. And we got some flaws in it. And we're finding out the flaws and we're going to try to correct all of that. But be careful about going back to something because when you start putting subdivision regulations and, and, and we need to increase that. I agree with you. And we've asked Ricky to send us some stuff and he is sending us some stuff as quickly as possible to try to increase that. But remember, this goes all the way across the parish to everybody. And so we're going to increase it as much as we can, as much as the people of Ascension Parish will get behind it. But it still will allow the developer the discretion to change things as their architectural uh, requirements are. It will be a civil matter. And that's one of the reasons why we went forward and, and been working years to get the parish court in there so people don't have to put their hard-earned money to enforce our regulations. So the intent is to try to help you guys have some protection when you do buy into a subdivision that you have a covenant that's there that's backed by the parish government that people have to continue to build what they say they're going to build. Now, obviously, after going through this process, we don't want to be dealing with this process now. It should be done the first time it comes to the parish council when you negotiate with them. And it should be a number of meetings with the residences. Please be, please be acceptable to have meetings with developers and council members and everything. You'd be surprised what you can get. I've yet to see council members not willing to attend meetings and work with the people. So, uh, yes, this is a good lesson in the past year. And as Kenny said, if you hadn't learned nothing, you hadn't been listening. But let's get together and work and make it right. And try to do something that's going to actually uh, protect the people of Ascension Parish. Let's take away the flaws that we have and fix it and move on and go from there. Uh, there may be a place in this parish for PUDs. There may not. depends upon what happens with subdivision regulations. But if we don't get our subdivision regulations where they are super tight, then the PUD is the, is the only thing that can protect the people with the covenant. And let's do away with the bad parts of them and keep the good parts. Uh, so I'm willing to work with anybody and work and make things better. Uh, just please don't have the attitude, just know about everything. Let's sit down and find out what's good, keep them there, how we can make things better, and what's bad and get rid of it. So I urge you to do that. We're going to be doing, uh, due to my health, I can't meet a whole lot. But uh, Ricky has given me some three no-brainers that people have uh, talked about uh, incessantly at, at, the, at the meetings and that we want to go forward with. We'll try to present that in the next strategic planning meeting, uh, get things out, and then we're going to have a few more hearings and try to get as much of this, uh, the, these regulations changed to protect the people as possible. So the, the council has been listening all this time, and it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, so hopefully we can get things done and move forward in a positive manner. I agree with Mr. Valentine. It's unacceptable with the way it is now. So thank you. Mr. Madam Attorney, within Councilman Shakespeare's statements, it would be known that you agreed that he offered up explanation and recused himself from the vote in this, this agenda item. <coughs> Anybody else? Any other speakers? Yes, Mr. President. Yes, I, I'm also uh, thankful for what's going on at Keystone right now. It's been a learning experience also for this administration. Uh, Port Ordinance has been in existence since 2005. I think this is the first time it's pretty much come to light. Uh, I think we all have a greater understanding of it now. We understand. Uh, I don't understand why the development code and the ordinance were put as separate items. That's one thing. Uh, the other thing is that uh, no matter what you do, and Mr. Valentine, uh, as far as any lot can be, I feel it can be put on it. Uh, you know, we got people in Ascension Parish that 
can't afford three hundred thousand dollar houses, two hundred thousand dollar houses. That's and you know some of us have kids that have that have foot trailers, buy mm -hmm. houses, or yeah. things like that. But again, we want to we want to grow, and we certainly I don't know how rumors get out it's about Section Eight housing and low income mm -hmm. housing. Uh, I don't think anybody uh, in this administration or this council uh, looked at that. We do have Section Eight housing in Ascension Parish. It's been here since 1981. Okay, as far as any any low income housing projects on the horizon, I don't see any of that. Uh, in the future of Ascension Parish. The, lot, the, the price of lots are so high, they cost so much. Uh, if you want to put a, buy a lot for $50,000 and uh, you want to put a, a trail on it, most of the time it's a temporary deal and then you build your house there. But, I mean, we are still growing. We have things to learn. Uh, I've looked at this put, uh, uh, situation more and more now. I've looked at the ordinance. Uh, you know, it's a give and take type thing. Okay, you you may give up uh, putting more lots in a subdivision, but you end up with more green space, you end up with sidewalks, you end up with parks, you end up with other concessions. Is that the way we want to go? I don't know. That's as a body and as a group. That's what we all need to sit here. We need to decide. We've got a lot of work to do in looking at these subdivision ordinances. I think uh, a couple of years ago there was a group that was put together to look at subdivision ordinances and look at the, uh, the rules. I, I think we're going to revisit that uh, and see exactly what, what came out of that. And maybe we can bring that forward and be a starting point. If we don't want them, we'll put us in a sense of power. So be it. If that's, that's the way it needs to be, let's, let's work on it. Let's do something about it. Let's not just sit up here and, and, and complain and say we got this one or that. So. I mean, I want to work with you. You guys want to do the same thing. I don't think anybody had any any bad thoughts on what was trying to happen here and to try and uh, hurt the people in Keystone. This is kind of an unusual situation. You had a subdivision. Now you put a PUD within an existing subdivision. And I don't think that's the way the situation was supposed to work in the first place. You know, if you, you had a self-standing PUD that, that would have worked out before there were any existing houses, I think it would have been a, a lot better situation. But so be it. If, if, if PUDs are not the way we want to grow, that's okay. Okay? If we want to go back to traditional neighborhoods with larger lots, well, let's do it. Let's look at how we can change the law. I mean, we have to enforce what's on the books now. As an administration, if that's the law, we have to go in. We have to do what we have to do. If not, uh, we got a problem. So. Again, I think if we all put our heads together, if we all work together as a team, I think that we can come up with something that will work for the parish, something that's maybe better than PUDs, better than SPUDs, better than TNDs, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, you know, we just need to work as a group. And, and I think that everybody here has good intentions, and I think they all want to do the right thing. And uh, I applaud you for hopefully tonight for passing this. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Any further discussion by any council members? Any opposition? We have recusal by Councilman Shakespeare. Other than that, we have no opposition. Do we need a roll call with a recusal? I don't think so. Passes. Gordon is passed. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to take this moment to thank uh, the advisory committee for Keystone and the surrounding subdivisions and the uh, past president and the administration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on to agenda item number 15. We have a motion by Mr. Todd Lambert to adjourn. We have a second by Mr. Dennis Cullen. Any opposition? Motion passes.